Hey, folks, how you doing? This is American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com. How are you? It is, it is the 8th of July. <laughs> yes, the 8th of July, 2017. Man, July's all, what, what? July's already here? What in the hell? Hey, we can review. Let's uh, take a look at that. This is American Liberty Radio Network. American Liberty Radio dot Weebly dot com. We had uh, a lot of stuff. Yeah, President Trump meets with President Putin. And um, turns out to be a, yeah, pretty good meeting from <laughs> from what I gathered. Um, it, it's, you know, uh, it's different ceasefire agreement reached between East and West. And there's a video, of course, uh, Infowars David Knight breaks down the day's biggest stories, including president Trump's monumental meeting with Putin at the G 20 in Germany. Um, obviously they had to leave quickly because protesters of the G 20, you know, were out to uh, disrupt the event. And, of course, you know, go from there. Uh, there was a, a, a lot going on. I, I want to say this about the protesters, and, and it's very... <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, let me just uh, put it out here for you. They're idiots. Every single last one of those people. They're just complete and total douchebags. Because... Everybody wants peace, quote unquote, peace, right? But nobody wants to use diplomacy or work to bring that about or find ways to positively bring peace to, you know, the government or anything like that. No, nobody. I mean, nobody does, you know. No, nobody wants to bring that uh, to the forefront and say, hey, let's diplomatically, you know, do this. Let's learn from one another. Let's help one another out. There's there's none of that. Absolutely none of that. It's all like we, you know, the, the, the opposition to peace, freedom, liberty and security will stand there in your face, point a gun at you or have a bunch of bullies around you saying we're going to have peace whether you like it or not. Well, it's not going to be your peace. OK, it's not going to be the way that you want it or, you know, it it's the way that quote unquote peace should be is diplomacy. Let's work together. Let's do all that. No, the opposition says, no, we're going to enslave you. And then we're going to stop all these wars. And then we're going to, you're going to work for us. And all. that's communism folks. That's complete and utter communism. That's not peace. That's not freedom. That's not uh, any of that at all. None of that works none of it and people are actually pissed off at the fact that they don't have that which is really to me a contradiction in terms because if you want peace well what are you following the the principles of chairman uh, Mao Zedong who wanted peace at the end of a gun is that what they wanted well the the opposition to to literal peace freedom and uh, liberty and security for the United States want that they don't want you to have your own property or to be able to travel without passports. There's a state uh, doing that right now. Um, the, you know, peace to them, no fighting, no nothing. Uh, just peace is just like, you know, look at, com uh, look at communism. Look at fascism. Look at socialism. Look at uh, any brand of totalitarian tyranny that you know of. And that's what this opposition to peace, freedom, liberty, and security want. Exactly like that. And this is the stupidest thing on the face of the planet. And as far as I'm concerned, we need to round these treasonous people up and ship them off to the country of their choice. Because if they want, if they want their brand of peace, then there's Venezuela, there's China, there's Russia, there's, you know, Saudi Arabia, there's, you know, yeah, you go and try to say something, 
you know, uh, under your freedom of speech in Saudi Arabia, you're going to get your head chopped off. No, serious. You go to Venezuela right now and you start talking about, you know, peace and liberty and all that. They're going to they're going to hog tie you and tie you up. That's this. You go to Russia and you look at President Vladimir Putin and you tell him, look, you know, we need freedom like there is in in America. He's going to laugh at you in the face. It's not going to work. That's just the way it is. It's not going to work. So the opposition to peace, freedom, liberty, and security, as we know it, as the core fundamental values that it exists, that exist in those, the opposition to that wants complete enslavement. That's their peace. That's their, that's what they want. They don't want anything else other than that. They don't care. They don't care. Okay? They don't. I don't, I, I, I just, uh, George Clooney, who is a, I think he's a douchebag, but anyway, he wanted open borders. He went to Europe. He's living over there, yada, yada. And then crap hits the fan. And where does he go? Packs up and moves back to the U.S. He's a freaking hypocrite. Okay. He, he's just, yeah, just don't even. Don Salazar, Infowars.com, knife-wielding man arrested at Trump Tower, sought Ivanka, quote-unquote, meeting, assassination attempt. An armed man was arrested in New York City Thursday afternoon after attempting to enter Trump Tower to meet, that's in quotes, first daughter Ivanka, uh, Ivanka Trump, according to the NYPD. Bronx resident uh, Sixto Benitez Amin. Adames, or whatever, 52, attempted to bypass secret uh, security agents by stating he was a U.S. senator scheduled to meet with Ivanka. Uh, He was found to be carrying two small throwing knives and wearing a bulletproof vest and also carried a tied-off sock containing weight, containing a weight. Quote, Benitez said he was there to talk to the president's daughter about her fashion line and claimed he owned the building, according to the report. Ivanka, meanwhile, and is currently touring Europe with her father, U.S. President Donald Trump, who is attending the G20 conference. The man, who will be, <clears throat> who will be undergoing a psychiatric evaluation, faces a criminal weapons charge as well as a charge for criminal possession of a forged New York State identification. Yeah, he's gone. That's going up on the uh, American Liberty Radio podcast, as is the other article I just I idiots every single one of them people are idiots and I don't really freaking care what they think of me I'm a patriot I want this country to be to have peace freedom liberty security freedom I want to have my own land. I want the government to stay the hell out of my pockets and out of my bedroom, out of my country, out of my, you name it. I, yeah, just get the hell out. We need to cut off Washington, D.C. and just throw it into the Atlantic. The Potomac's too shallow. Let's just throw it off into the Atlantic. George Clooney is a complete idiot. What an effing hypocrite. That's up on American Liberty Radio podcast. Here's something. Jerome Corsi writes for Infowars.com, Google throws party in D.C. for digital Democrats next week. Google Soros fight to keep quote-unquote net neutrality rules to control Internet and censor Infowars.com. Let me give you a little history. 1995, 96, I got my first computer. My first full-fledged desktop computer. It was an AST computer. I can give you all the text. It was like a 520 megabyte hard drive or 580 or something. It was something like that, right? Uh, And it was, you know, really low processing speed. But it was my first computer, an AST computer, right? So anyway, 
that's when I got my computer. And I began to look and investigate and research and do all that. And around 98, 99, I, I heard about this guy named Alex Jones. And began to, you know, find out more about him and everything else. And then I, you know, for about nine or, you know, not even that, I was seven or eight years, I didn't even, you know, listen to him or anything. And then I started listening to him and everything he said, well, almost everything he said was correct. You know, because I don't take every word, you know, that he says as being gospel. I, you know, investigate and research. And that's why I tell you folks, go out and research this stuff. So I began to listen to him and I began to, you know, listen and my friends that I've known for many, many years and, and the people that I knew on the quote unquote, the fringe, I started, you know, listening to them and they were telling me about censorship. And I knew about this from history. They were, you know, from ancient history and history of the U S people tried to censor everyone else because they didn't like the speech. They didn't like what that person says. I'm going to, you know, censor them or, you know, and because they could not do that, they began to take what they were using and saying and using that against them and began to spin everything they started to say. Give you a prime example, the movie Wag the Dog. Okay. Or even now, more recently, Fox News, CNN, fake news, that kind of thing. Right. So it, basically, people who were telling the truth to somebody else, the other person would use their, their words against them and spin it and say they're wrong and blah, blah, blah. Conspiracy theorists, right? That's what they would call us. This is back in the 90s, right? Late 90s, early 2000s. Of course, 9-11 happens and all of a sudden we get this huge push for censorship, net neutrality. Net neutrality, basically, let me, let me just give you a, a little synopsis of what uh, net neutrality is. It is... Supposedly, and I use that in air quotes, supposedly giving both sides an equal amount of time to say what they have to say. Or that's, uh, what's the uh, other document that was, uh, the fairness doctrine, that, that's all part of that as well, as well as net neutrality. Net neutrality also has another element to it. And basically, they won't tell you this. The Soros-backed organizations won't tell you this. And they want to basically shut down anybody like myself, anybody like Alex Jones, Rush Limbaugh, Michael Savage, anybody who tells the truth. That's what these Soros-backed organizations and net neutrality is all about. Shut down the truth. Shut down the patriot movement. Shut down anybody that has any facts to put us into a hole. That, that's what they're telling their constituents. You know. They don't want the truth or the facts to get out. They don't want their corruption to be revealed. Because that's what they are. They're corrupt individuals. So here it is. Jerome Corsi writes in Infowars.com. Uh, Infowars received this week certainly by mistake, that's in parentheses, an invitation by Google to attend a reception in conjunction with a newly formed Democratic Digital Communications Staff Association on Thursday, July 13th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Eastern at the Google Washington, D.C. office. Why is Google having an office in Washington, D.C.? By the way, Google is uh, was funded by, as, as well as Facebook, was uh, funded by the uh, the financing arm of the CIA in QTEL. Go look it up. I'm not even going to give you all of the information. I've got the information, but you guys need to go do your own homework. In QTEL. N I N dash the letter Q dash T E L. Go look that up. <clears throat> Infowars.com has repeatedly warned that Eric Schmidt, a former CEO of Google and the current executive chairman of Google's parent company, Alphabet Incorporated, was among Hillary's top funders and closest advisors in the 2016 presidential campaign. In an email dated April 2nd, 2014, released by WikiLeaks, Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign chairman, John Podesta, wrote Hillary's campaign manager, Robbie Mook, about a meeting he had just completed with Google's Eric Schmidt. Schmidt. There we go. Then it goes on and talks about that. So I'm going to put that on the American Liberty Radio podcast. 
on Facebook. Now, people are going, well, geez, if Facebook's so bad, why are you using it? Use the enemy's tools against them. They use our words against us, so, and they spin everything we say, so why not use their, their, you know, use their tools against them? Why not? You know, plus it's fair game and we have freedom of speech. I can say whatever the hell I want and there's nothing they can do about it. Now, Here's something that a lot of people don't understand, and I'm 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 not saying I know it all, and I don't because uh, you know I may have overlooked something. I don't know everything. I'm not the smartest man on the, in the planet, okay? But I do know a little something. All right. So, but we need to take a look at what is being perpetrated, or I should say, what is being supported as "quote unquote" real news. CBS says that real news. If you look at them, we're real news as opposed to fake news. No, they're propagandists. Bottom line, ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, uh, you name it, all down the line, they're all propagandists. By the way, propaganda is or was at one point illegal in the United States of America. There's Cold War uh, stuff going on. And it was made illegal. Propaganda was made illegal in the United States. Go look that one up. Just put in, smart, uh, go to startpage.com, put in uh, propaganda illegal in U.S. And you'll find a whole bunch of stuff. Now, let's take a look at these propagandists, shall we? They're losing ratings left and right. They're falling apart. They're just, they're, they're done they're done, okay? Alex Jones declares CNN officially dead as their ratings continue to drop and their lies are exposed. Okay? Low ratings prove the MSN giant is on its way down. CNN officially declared dead. Well, just because Alex Jones declares it doesn't mean it's actually so. So I will give that opinion so that's going on American Liberty Radio podcasts. When you look at the various news outlets, when you examine them, when you just totally examine each and every single one of these news outlets, quote unquote news outlets, you're going to see a massive, massive problem. None of them know how to tell the truth (laughs) none of them and i laugh because that's what they are they lie they cheat they steal they and i'm not declaring anything the evidence itself proves that these networks are are failing miserably msn with morning joe with joe scarborough and his fiance mika brzezinski whose father died recently Oh, oh yeah and you know the smallest violin in the in the world is playing the fun- funeral dirge. I, I don't care. He was a globalist, you know. She follows in his footsteps, and that's just the way it is. You know, Fox is now, you know, fair and balanced. No, they're completely biased. You know, CBS, NBC, ABC, they're all, you know, they're all, they're all propagandists. You cannot get around the fact that they are propagandists. They're spreading bullcrap. They're corrupt. They lie. They're failing miserably. Look at their ratings. Look at Alexa, which is the ratings, you know, some of the ratings uh, outlets out there showing, you know, who's doing what and where, why, when, and how on the networks. And Alexa will tell you who's failing. That and Nielsen ratings. Go look it up. I mean, I'm not I'm not sitting here just yakking. I'm I, you know, I know this stuff. All right? So anyway, networks lie, period. All the networks lie. Every single last one of them, they all lie. You know, the truth is what you know, what you research, what you handle, what you see, what you hear. You are Fully capable of finding the truth on your own. Now, how are you going to sift through all the bull crap? Oh, believe me, you'll know the BS when you see it. I did many years ago. I, I knew it right off, you know. I, I mean, <laughs> and plus, mama didn't raise no fool. 
She goes, just don't believe everything you see. Go do some research. And I did. And voila, you know, doors open for me. So anyway, intellectually speaking, not literally. Uh, Anywho, speaking of truth, go to Mr. John Christopher J-Man Collins at thetruthwar.net. You want somebody young to tell you the truth of what's going on? This man is in college, and I guarantee you he is right on with everything he talks about. Seriously. I mean, this guy knows it. You know, he'll give you his opinion. He'll read you that, you know, he's in college. It's college age. Okay. So, yeah. So check out thetruthwar.net. Go check out Mr. John Christopher J. Man Collins. Go to The Truth War on Facebook. And, uh, yeah, tell him I sent you, man. Tell him I sent you. Somebody else tells the truth, too, and that would be Brian Lang over at LiveTruthRadio.com. Live Truth Radio and Television with your host, Brian Lang. LiveTruthRadio.com. Oh, yeah, let's not stop there. Let's go with Nick Tucker at Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. You want to talk about in-depth analysis and telling you like it is without all the crap that goes on behind it and without all the propaganda that's propping up these propagandists in the mainstream propaganda media. Did I say propaganda enough? (laughs) You get the point. Mr. Nick Tucker at Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker. Yes. Distorted Reality with Nick Tucker on Facebook and on Gab.ai, G-A-B dot A-I. Go check him out as well on his podcast, <clears throat> excuse me, at distortedreality.podbean.com. He's also on American Liberty Radio Network. Yes. Anywho, folks. <sighs> Little side note here, since I'm promoting people. If you're an independent artist, independent musician, independent author, independent filmmaker, go check out Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go talk to Tom Slick, who's the host of The Morning Brew over there at Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go to 926theblitz.rocks. That's R O C K S. 926theblitz.rocks. Go check out The Morning Brew and Frankie May and all the people there and all the hosts and shows that you will want to hear at Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go check out Mr. Tom Slick and The Morning Brew. 926theblitz.rocks. So there you go. Anywho, my nose is so just bad, man. Right at the tail end of this stupid sinus infection and then the allergies kick in and then you're like (laughs) you're a freaking mess yeah i'm moving up to montana i thought i wouldn't have to deal with this crap but i guess not (sighs) oh my god uh but it's it's gonna be really stinking hot and you know today and in the next few days so you know uh yeah we we've got some it's gonna be hot um, it's triple digits. We're talking low 100s. We're, you know, like 102, 104, you know. I don't know, man. <laughs> it makes me want to move, man. I don't know. So, Adon Salazar, Infowars.com. Trump says Mexico will, quote unquote, absolutely pay for wall while seated next to Mexican president. U.S. president insistent Mexico will fund border wall. Mexico will absolutely pay for the wall along with uh, along the U.S. southern border, President Donald Trump stated at the G20 conference Friday. The president made the declaration while seated beside Mexican President Enrique Peña Nieto and other world leaders at the G20 summit in Germany. Quote, it's great to be with my friend, the president of Mexico, and we're negotiating NAFTA and some other things with Mexico, and we'll see how it all turns out. But I think we've made really good progress, so it's great to be with you, unquote. Trump said, shaking hands with Nieto. A reporter followed up by in- inquiring, Mr. Trump, do you still want Mexico to pay, to, uh, pay for the wall? Unquote, to which Trump can be heard stating, absolutely. Since 2016 campaign, Trump has pledged to build a wall between the U.S. and its southern neighbor in order to stymie illegal immigration, human trafficking, and drug smuggling. 
So there you go. That's going up on American Liberty Radio podcast. I, I'm 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 with I'm with the president on this one. Build the damn wall. Hey, how about doing this? Hey, militia down there in the southern borders, right? Oh, where'd that New York accent come from? Sorry, I'm not in the mafia. Sorry. <laughs> I do voices, folks. I, I do voiceovers. Sorry, I went into character on that one. Um, yeah, so I think what we need to do is we need to go to the southern border with the militia, with some of the uh, National Guard, and we need to help patriots like yourself and myself build this freaking wall we need to take equipment down there and start building it screw washington dc screw the state of texas new mexico arizona and california screw you people we're building a damn wall you don't like it i don't really give a crap build the damn wall the militia is down there to protect those people the national guard should be there as well you know defying orders from their ceos just saying look we need to just you know build this freaking wall and get it over with We need to stop all this crap. Now, I know in a discussion, you would probably say, well, you know, they have a right to be here. No, they don't. That's my answer to that. You know, President Nieto, Mexican President Nieto needs to understand that, number one, his country is failing miserably. It's going to go by way of Venezuela. I mean, it's 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 failing miserably. Okay. Some Mexicans, some you know illegal immigrants that have been here. I don't, I don't, I don't like calling them immigrants, but some illegal immigrants that have been here in the last six months to a year have left and went back to Mexico. Why? Because we're harsh on them. We don't want them here. You want to be here? You do it legally. Get in the back of the line, butthead. Because hey, I don't jump in line when you know at the grocery store, do I? Then don't jump in line to be a citizen. Do the right thing and and you know, get in the back of the line. Don't like it? I don't care. You know, suck it up, Chico. Get in the back of the line. I'm all for immigration. I want people to be free to have individual rights to I I want that but I don't want people jumping over the damn border to try to steal everything from us and you know make everybody here in the US cater to them no screw you get in the back of the line jackass you know it just it pisses me off I just know I know People have argued with me over the years. <laughs> People have argued with me over the years. You know, well, they need to come, you know, and, and have that, and they need the opportunity to leave their country. And Well, I get that, you know, there, Einstein. I understand that. But you do it the right way. My ancestors coming over from England did not just jump the border and go, okay, America, you're going to take care of me. No, screw you. My ancestors came over here and worked their asses off to, to be in this country. Okay. Some of my ancestors came down from Canada. Hello. I got relatives in Canada somewhere over in Quebec and Newfoundland and all that area. My great grandfather was from Canada. Hello. Hello. I think he was, or it was my great-great-grandfather, one of the two. But hey, do it legally. If you can't do that, get the back, get get your ass back home and fight for freedom over there. Jeez, I get sick and tired of this immigration. I'm just going to stop right there and take a freaking break because, you know, hey. Uh. <laughs> I don't know, man. I really honestly am at just, I, uh, I'll be right back. This is American Liberty Radio Network. This is the American Liberty Radio Network podcast. Go to AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com and I'll be back right after this.
the reality underneath the honesty. LiveTruthRadio.com Check out Late Night in the Midlands with your host Michael Vera at LateNightInTheMidlands.com Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Go to LateNightInTheMidlands.com The world as we know it has been turned upside down. The leaders are faced with possible annihilation from their enemies. The United States is at the brink of a total collapse. This is the reality we live in. What can be done? The truth. The facts. American Liberty Radio Network. AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com Folks, welcome back. This is American Liberty Radio Network, AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com. How are you? How you doing? It's the 8th of July, 2017. So, you're hanging out with me today for the next, uh, oh, I don't know, 28 minutes. You know, if you want to support American Liberty Radio Network, you can. Hey, I'm looking for advertisers, so if you want to advertise to 16,000 people or more, then, uh, yeah, well, that's how many followers I have on uh, my network so far. But I'm reaching more than that, considerably more than that. Especially here in the Billings, Montana area, where I broadcast from, where the studio of American Liberty Radio Network is. And uh, so if you want to advertise on the network for, you know, your local here in the Laurel or Lockwood or Billings area or surrounding areas, please let me know because, you know, you want to know how much it's going to be, what what it's going to cost you? Well, go to AmericanLibertyRadio.Weebly.com. Go to the sponsors page. There's all the information right there. I'm running a special, so that'll be over in, uh, what is this, July? Yeah, that'll be over on the 1st of September. So I'm running a special right now. You lock yourself in on that special, you're good for the rest, you know, for whatever, you know. You're good. You're, you're, <laughs> because after September 1st, it, 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 well, yes, it will go up a little, but I'm not out to break your advertising budget. So right now, if you lock yourself into the to the rates that I got right now, you're good. Uh, big thumbs up virtual high five to you so there you go so anyway go to american liberty radio dot weebly dot com go to the sponsors page everything you need to know is right there and you have an option that if you don't want to advertise but you like american liberty radio network and you like what we do here become a patron and a little link right there on the left hand side of your screen on the sponsor side that says become a patron click that drop a dollar in the kitty help us keep the lights on around here and keep getting out the truth and the facts without the bs and hey you're good so there you go got any questions all you got to do is ask that's uh, because you know hey how are you going to know if you don't right (laughs) you know what i mean 
So email me at American Liberty Radio at USA.com, American Liberty Radio at USA.com. And uh, yeah, there you go. So we're doing some upgrades around here. Well, we're not doing them, we're planning to do some upgrades around here. New equipment, new, you know, stuff like that. So hey. So there you go. Anywho, let's get back to the news, shall we? Shall we? Let's get back to the news, okay? Um. Anywho, let's go to... I like to go to Breitbart to see what they're saying. Some people say that's a crap site, but I don't think so. They got some really good stuff over there. Soros-funded media panics over immigration enforcement. Yeah, duh. Uh, just no-brainer. Hello. <laughs> I mean, seriously, really? <laughs> you didn't think so? Okay, there you go. You know? Um, <laughs> so, Soros-funded media panics over immigration enforcement. This is John Binder over at Breitbart, 8th of July, 2017. President Donald Trump's administration enforcement of United States immigration laws leaving media funded uh, by left-wing billionaire George Soros in a panic, ProPublica, which is backed by Soros, released a report blasting the Trump administration and the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency for enforcing immigration laws for all illegal aliens in the U.S., the media group writes... The head of the Immigration and Custom Enforcement's unit in charge of deportation has directed his officers to take action against all undocumented immigrants they uh, may cross paths with, regardless of criminal histories. The guidance appears to go beyond the Trump administration's publicly stated aims, and some advocates say may explain a marked increase in immigration arrests. In February memo, Matthew Albens, a career official who heads the Enforcement and Removal Operations Division of ICE, informed his 5,700 deportation officers that, quote, effective immediately, ERO officers will take enforcement action against all removable aliens encountered in the course of their duties, unquote. Though the Trump administration has made clear that illegal aliens with criminal records would be prioritized for deportation, Federal immigration law allows for all illegal aliens to be potential, potentially subject to deportation. In recent months, ProPublica increased its attacks on the Trump administration's handling of immigration enforcement and legal immigration measures. That's going up on American Liberty Radio Podcast. Check it out. Check out the Facebook page, American Liberty Radio Podcast. Like the page. Share it with your friends. You know, write some nasty grams there in the... <laughs> In the comment section. You know, it really doesn't matter. I don't want trolls because you guys are idiots. You just, I, I don't care. I mean, you guys just really piss me to F off because, you know, you guys don't know anything. I mean, you know, perfect example. Go to YouTube, look up Mark Dice and watch him interview people and just ask people questions on the streets. You're going to find how stupid these people truly are. It's just amazing, man. So let's go over to here, shall we? RT.com. Yeah, there's protests. Hear that? That's a video on the RT site, live G20 protest in Hamburg. Let me pause that so I can tell you what's going on. Trump, different than on TV. We can restore relations with U.S. That's what Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, has said. I'm glad, okay, because he's not that much younger than President Trump. He's actually not that much younger. Um, Trump meeting with Putin was tremendous. Ivanka Trump sits in for Dad Donald at G20's leader a G20 leaders meeting. And, of course, the protesters, with the live update you just heard some of the audio of, Welcome to Hell, Hamburg Burns, G20 Protest Spiral. Uh, yeah. So, I'm going to share that uh, link on American Liberty Radio Podcast so you can check it out. And if it's not live when you watch it, you can probably just click the button and there it is. Um Yep, there it is. G20 protest in Hamburg. So, 
I often look at other countries and look at their leaders because I want to I, I want to see how they react to people wanting peace, freedom, liberty, and security. And for the most part, certain countries and certain elements in those countries, certain groups, certain factions, don't play well with other people. And I understand that. And I understand the protests. And I understand why they're pissed off. But I also understand the fact that peace, freedom, liberty, and security went out over tyranny every single time. And these protesters for G20 and all this, you go ask five of them, you're going to get five different answers of why they're protesting. They have no idea why they're protesting. They just don't like Donald Trump. He's not perfect. He, he's not, no, he's not, and, 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 but he's what we have, okay? He's, he's what we got. So, you know, I chuckle because, you know, I also say that it doesn't matter who you vote for. Your votes don't count, number one. Number two, whoever winds up in the Oval Office is just another body filling the suit in the Oval Office. It's another bobblehead. I mean, that's pretty much it. Donald Trump has gone far beyond that and has created such not only animosity but it, he, and enemies across the globe, but he's also taken the United States of America and, and brought it you know, slowly back up into a more manageable area. And that's what he is. He's a manager and that's what he does. But his businesses, other than the Taj Mahal recently filing, you know, for bankruptcy and liquidation, uh, he does what he does. And now, you know, he's got everything afforded to him at that point, at this point in his career, where he, you know, if if he leaves in, you know, at the end of his first term or even at the end of his second term when he's almost 80, yeah, he's got a good retirement. You know, all of his business, you know, all of his businesses are in his kids' names now, you know, his kids run them, but all the money that is directed earmarked for him personally is in a trust, much like George H.W. Bush and George W., all the presidents. All the money goes into a trust, and once they retire, that money goes to them, you know. So, I mean, I mean, it, it, that's, yeah, so, but Donald Trump has taken this country from the pits of, from the edge of the pits of hell to basically pulling it back some. Oh, we're still going to hell in a handbasket because of protests like you see at the G20 over there in Germany and and all these other things going on in the U.S., of course we're going to go to hell in a handbasket. You, do you think we're going to be safe? Do you think there's a massive freaking, you know, uh, you know, uh, faceless name in the sky that's going to come down and make everything right? And, yeah, I'm making reference to you Christians out there who think that. There's going to be a change, and Donald Trump is at the brink of that change, and he's looking over, you know, on the other side of the aisle, and he's saying, yes, we have to change, and here's how we have to do it. Now, when you look back in history and you look at the prognosticators, the prophets, the soothsayers, the, you know, all these people, they say that there is going to be, even Edgar Casey. go look at his research and his, you know, uh, writings as well, uh, the sleeping prophet, go look at Edgar Casey. He even said there was going to be a one world government. Nostradamus, back when he, you know, through his quatrains and all of his prophecies, uh, alluded to, I'm not going to say said specifically, but alluded to a a more controlled world. You know, even though most of his prophecies, he, he said things here and there and repeated things here and there. So myself personally, I don't really give him credit for or, or hold, you know, any truth to his prophecies, but I know that about 70% of them have come true. You know, so... Take it for what you believe it should be taken for, you know. Edgar Casey is more accurate than Nostradamus, I can tell you that much. But when we look at stuff like that, both on what we see out in our world right now, what Donald Trump's doing, what President Vladimir Putin's doing, when you look at the prophecies also on another level, you can see 
that they don't have to be exactly the way that they say they're going to be. In other words, you and I can change the direction of these things. We know how they work. We know what they are. We see the thing happening in front of us. We can change it. Could we not? America, the United States of America, the United States itself, has been through a hell of a lot in the last 241 years. And, and guess what? We the people are a resilient bunch of folks. And we can, <laughs> we can get up, pull our bootstraps up, and get to working again to make America great again, to borrow that from President Trump. But yeah, we can do that. But unfortunately, there are people out there in the opposite side of the aisle saying, no, we want complete and total tyranny in this country, and we want to give everybody everything, and we want the borders open, and we want you bleeding heart pieces of crap. Why the hell would you ever want that? I mean, to me, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you can look at Germany uh, prior to uh, the, the fall of the wall in 89, you can look at uh, uh, Russia, you can look at China, you can look at Venezuela, you can look at, uh, you know, all these other third world countries, Saudi Arabia, all these countries who don't give their people freedoms and liberties to do what they want, to acquire what they want, to make their lives better. Look at these countries. They're in shambles right now. And you want that for the United States of America? Well, you freaking globalist sympathizing New World Order pieces of crap are the dumbest people on the face of the planet. I don't, <laughs> I don't really care what you think. You guys are dumb. You're just stupid. Okay? You're just stupid. So anyway, enough of my rant. Yeah, big sigh. Breitbart.com. Tens of thousands of Americans die each year because they have no access to health care. Hello? Yeah, did you actually think we had a good health care system in the U.S.? Refugees to Europe are easy prey for Islamic rad radicalization, Italian police chief said. China-Russia relations enjoy, quote, new normal, unquote, for closer, closer cooperation. So how does that make the relationship between Russia and the U.S.? Oh, let's take a look at that. Shall we? <clears throat> this is from uh, Kim Jong-un over at Reuters. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate that very much. In contrast to an unpredictable international situation, the China-Russia relationship in recent years has witnessed a new normal of stable and sustainable high-level de development. Although worries were swirling over whether the sound momentum of the bilateral relationship could be sustained after U.S. President Donald Trump sent a signal of policy adjustment toward China and Russia at the beginning of his presidency, the China-Russia relationship has not been affected. The Sino-Russia Strategic Partnership of co uh, Coordination, which began in the 1990s, has been continuously enriched and improved by generous uh, by generations of leadership of both countries, setting up an unprecedented model of major power relations. These achievements are attributed to the endeavors of state leaders of both countries. The president of China and Russia have multiple face-to-face -face meetings at different occasions every year, which not only develops personal intimate ties, but also enables timely communication and exchange of views over bilateral and multilateral issues. So there you go. But how does that affect you and I? Well, I mean, I, as I said before, peace. Okay. What is peace? Well, it's simple. It's no war, you know. Um, no, no battles, no disagreements. No, well, disagreements, but <clears throat> nobody pointing guns at each other, saying you're going to do what we tell you to do. That's just that's to me is is the ultimate in peace, you know. But I believe that the China Russian relationship will work out great for the U.S. because now we don't have to worry about either one of them, you know. 
as far as, you know, coming and stealing everything that we have, uh, which, of course, because China owns, yeah, owns about 20% of our national debt, they can come in and go, yeah, because you owe us money, we'll take the Empire State Building. Because you owe us money, we'll take all the national parks. And which, of course, if you look at the national parks nowadays in the U.S., yeah, most of them, most of them have. Yeah, if you look at who owns them, it's not the United States of America or the Bureau of Land Management, okay? Seriously. My nose. God, I hate that. I'm going to put up this... Uh, this uh, video on American Liberty Radio uh, podcast because it's interesting and uh, excuse me wow nose decides the ones to drain right at that moment that just sucked big time sorry about that my apologies I need to uh, make sure that doesn't happen anymore uh, American Liberty Radio podcast I just put up a uh, a a uh, as soon as I refresh the page, I'll tell you what <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. While that's doing that, oh here it is. Yeah, the page finally decides. Oh, oh, you want me to work? Oh, okay, yeah. CNN caught in giant new Russia lie. Alex Jones, Millie Weaver, and Mike Cernovich break down the newest Russian theme. Uh, lie out of the clown news network cnn of course you know anyway that's on american liberty radio podcast on facebook um when we examine everything that we are as the united states of america as we are sitting at this particular time in the present moment the 8th of july 2017 when we examine ourselves and the politics that goes on within the the borders of the United States. <clears throat> Some of us say that the less we know, the better off we are. Well, <laughs> the less you know, the dumber you are, really. The more you know, the better off you are going to be by being able to take the steps by the opportunities you have, if you have uh, enough of them to take the steps to do what you have to do to make America great again. Bottom line. And I say that, and most people are going, duh, I know that. Well, yeah, but what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? I mean, you know, how can we, <laughs> how can we as a group of people who, who tout peace, freedom, liberty, and security for the nation of the United States Say that we know what the outcome of our day is going to be. How, how can we do that? No, we can't because we don't have our crystal ball in front of us and we don't know what our day is going to be like. Because we're met with unexpected things happening. And because we, we know this and because we understand this, we live in a sense of fear at times. Fear in the sense of we just don't know. We fear what we don't understand. We fear what we don't know. And unfortunately, people live there completely. And so they don't do anything because they don't want to risk it. They don't want to be inconvenienced. They don't want, you know, go down the line, fill in the blanks. But we know these things. <laughs> we know that we fear these things. And, how, and, and, and I just don't get how people can live in that much fear. I just don't get it. I don't I don't understand it cuz I don't live in that fear. Fear. Someone once said and you've probably heard this, fear as an acronym. False evidence appearing real. Fear. So when you look at the likes of CNN and, and all this fake news that's going on, why are you living in fear of their propaganda, of what they're saying is going on within their propaganda? They're telling you that the world is this, that your country's this, that your city's this, and you're living in fear because of their lack of knowledge or their just unbelievable corrupt 
nature of, of, of disseminating the quote-unquote news. What? I mean, seriously, to me, you just got to open your eyes and look out around you and go, oh, wait a minute, the news said this was happening, but it's not. Prime example, I'm, <laughs> I want to give you prime example. A friend of mine lives in Michigan, and she doesn't live that far from Dearborn, Michigan. And um, you get these 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 memes and these articles and these things coming up on Facebook, and you've seen them where, you know, Sharia law is in Dearborn, and everybody's pissed off, and all this. No, it's not. Okay? I, shut the hell up about Dearborn, Michigan. No, it's not. Okay? Well, dispel that freaking claim right now. No, it's not. Go If you know people in Dearborn, if you know people nearby, you know, in, in whatever city there is, you know, Flat Rock or whatever, go and talk to these people. Is it happening? Go into the streets with your friends that live in Dearborn and look around and examine for yourself what's going on. I don't know what's happening in Dearborn because, one... I'm not there, and two, I'm here, <laughs> okay, so I'm just getting word from my friend who lives near Dearborn telling me that none of the things that have been talked about and been claimed about Dearborn in the last six months to a year is true, it's all bull crap. it's all bull crap. So for people to look at me and call me a conspiracy theorist or say I'm a right-wing radical or whatever, you know, I wear that as a badge of honor. Call me every name in the book and make up a few because you know what? You're the freaking idiot that doesn't want to go out and look at this stuff up and examine what's going on in your city. I'm the one that knows this stuff. Hey, and I don't know everything, and I could be wrong because I may have overlooked something, okay? I'm not perfect here, all right? I'm just saying, <laughs> all right? <sighs> but to make claims and to call people names and to do this and to do that, blah, 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 blah. Bottom line is I know that there's a lot of smart people out there. Thank you very much for being smart because you at least break out of the indoctrinated propaganda bullcrap that's out there and you see what's really going on. Thank you very much. I'm applauding you. There you go. So you guys rock. Thank you. Share your information with me. All you other trolls and pieces of crap out there, just go about your business and just stay the hell out of the way and let the adults you know, take care of business. So if you want to share with me your information, please do American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. Go to American Liberty Radio dot Weebly dot com. You can also email me from there as well. Uh, check things out. You know, do what you have to do. Let me know what's going on because I'd like to know. It's a discussion that you and I, you know, need to have. And I can't have a discussion with you if you're not, you know, giving me information. So, you know, American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. Even those listening around the world, thank you. Appreciate that. Send me your information. Anybody in Dearborn want to send me information? Go ahead and do that too. Um,. I'm out of here, folks. I got to go because, you know, hey, <laughs> I got I to gotta go, okay? I just, I can't stay here all day. I got things to do outside of the studio. You know what I mean? Uh, so anyway, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, hey, you know, uh, American Liberty Radio at USA.com. American Liberty Radio at USA.com. And I'm going to go. I'm out of here. American Liberty Radio Network, Spreaker.com. American Liberty Radio Network, sharing the truth one fact at a time without all the BS. <laughs> <laughs>